Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to have another PF Sense video. Today we're going to do the walkthrough of the setup wizard. We're going to take a fresh clean PF Sense and we're going to set it up from, from the beginning. Let's get started. All right, here we go. I have this PF Sense um, and if you looked at the last video, we had uh, connected via the serial console. And so this time we're gonna go and take a look at through the web interface. So if this is your fresh install, you've got admin for your pass username and pfsense as your password. That's what you get by default. Go ahead and hit sign in and it's gonna take you through the wizard. Basically, you, you're gonna have a next, next, next. So we're gonna hit next on this. And this is, you know, you can buy support from, P from NetGate. Uh, we're going to ignore all that and get to our first actual thing to fill out. So the host name of the PF Sent. You can name it whatever you like. You can give the domain whatever you like, and you can set the primary DNS. So in our case, we're going to do 1.1, 1 .1, and then we're going to go ahead and pick up the Google ones. And so those are the DNS servers. I'm going to leave this. We're going to call this... Uh, PF sense, it's totally fine. We'll just leave it like that. You can change to whatever you want. Here you have the time server. And so pick your time zone, wherever you are in the world. We're gonna pick America and go down and pick Chicago, since that is the closest one to us. Go ahead and hit next. Now the very important WAN configuration. If you have a static IP address, you're going to want to change this. If you do not have a static IP address, more than likely DHCP is the right answer for you. So I'm going to leave it at DHCP, but I'm going to go ahead and take the static one and show you how to do that. So you click static here, and then you'll scroll on down to the IP address. And, and I'm just going to throw in something here. This is internal IP address, and I'm just using this as example. So do not copy this exactly. So this is just an example. If you had a static IP address, you'd put the IP address that you have, and then you'll have a gateway. Uh, and then you'll, depending on how many IP addresses you have, you'll need to select the subnet, okay? And then you would go down here and hit next. Now in our particular case, since I am actually double netting and I have this connected to my normal net on, on the WAN side, and then my PC through the LAN side. So it's giving out a DHCP IP address, which is technically an internal IP address, but normally your DHCP would give you an external IP address. No worries there. All this stuff will be grayed out once you have it set to DHCP. However, some things, if you have PPOE, and you're using like a DSL connection that you want to put in PPOE, you can do that right here. I believe that will be in, is in the drop downs also. But then the last two items that you see checked here are kind of important because what they do is they block internal networks. Um, so if you look here, the 10, 10 slash H, the six, 172.16 slash 12s and the one 192.168 slash 16s. So those, those are the, the non-public IP, private IP networks that it would block. And then block non-internet routed network. So there you go. All right. So the next step after that will take you to the LAN configuration. And this is where you would want to set up whatever LAN uh, addresses you want. I highly recommend that you do not pick 192.168.1.1. You want to change this at minimum to something else. You, you pick a number between one and 254 or something like that. So just pick, I'm gonna pick 45. And we'll do the slash 24 
and then hit next. Now, here's the other very important thing. Change your default password. We even get a little warning up here at the top that says, hey, you're using the default password. Do not leave your system with a default password. You are running dangerously if you do that. So pick a new password. And then hit next. And then the next thing it's gonna do is it's going to reload. So it's gotta save those changes, reload, kind of reboot the whole system because then you'll get a new IP address because default out of the box, this PFSense, if you just plug it into the WAN, into your WAN at, and, and the LAN into the LAN, it will be set by default as DHCP uh, and, and have you the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. So, yeah. All right, we're gonna hit reload and see what happens. We'll give it a minute and it will actually redirect you. See? Congratulations! And then hit finish. Now, what's gonna happen now is because if you look at the IP address now, up there I have 192.168.1.1. Since I changed it to 45, that's gonna be 192.168.45.1 when everything is set and done. Okay, it's back. Let's go ahead and hit advance and continue on. So, we'll type in our username. And password. And boom, we're in. All right. So, here we go. The first thing you're going to get is this terms and services thing from um, NetGate. Just go ahead and feel free. Please read it. You should read it. Click accept and then click close. So you're going to get this NetGate service thing over here. The first thing I like to do is just go ahead and get rid of that because it's useless information um, past a first read. And you're going to have on your dashboard. All right, I mean, click on that. On your dashboard, if I get back to that, is the first thing you'll have over here is the interfaces. You're gonna see the WAN interface and the LAN interface, and those are the two that we just configured. And then there's the opt port, which is the third port on this machine that you can plug in if you want to have maybe a DMZ zone or something like that. All right, so moving on over to the system information, you will get right here. This is the name you figured out, the user that you're logged into, and then there's going to be the system uh, serial number and device ID, uh, BIOS information, PFSense version. And here's, here's a good thing here. Where you see this green, let me just make this a little bit bigger. All right, you see this green right here? If there's a new version of PFSense out, you will see something different here. And it, you will have a button there with a little cloud on it that you can click that will go ahead and take you to the update area. So it's important to log in and check that every once in a while. You can actually click this little arrow circle here and check again. So we're gonna click that and you'll see that it's obtaining update status. So that's a manual way you can go out there and say, hey, check for the update now. And it'll do that. While that's doing that, we'll look at the next thing. Oh, see, it's already done. And yes, this machine is up to date. It is the ARM64 2.4.5 uh, release that uh, is current for PFSense at the time of this video. CPU, this is a dual core CPU, ARM CPU. Uh, been up six days because uh, it's just been sitting here running. <laughs> And, you know, the current date and time, the DNS servers that are set up here, time, state tables, CPU load, memory usage, disk usage, stuff like that. Now, you might be asking, okay, what else can I do here? Up the top, you're going to get this plus sign. And here is a plethora of items you can add. Number one, the one thing, first thing I like to add is the smart status. So if you add that to it, it's going to 
show you the discs in there. Now on these lower end ones uh, where it has e EMC memory or hard drive, it, you're not going to get anything here. But on the upper end, the large ones, if you put it, if it has an M.2 or NVMe drive or even a, a, a SATA drive in there, um, this is a good item to put in your dashboard so you can see the smart status of your machine. Not relevant for this one, but I want to point that out as that's one that I like to put in here. Okay. So, other ones. You can pick traffic gra gra graphs. Traffic graph. So, if you put the traffic graph on there, just please keep in mind that it does weight down the, the processor. So, you see how it just popped up 48% and, and it increased the processor quite a bit when when we had that in there so the other one I like to add is the open VPN because I tend to set up quite a few open VPNs servers on these PF senses and it's a great one to have on there so you can see who's connected at the dashboard you can look there's like so there's many many other ones here or several other ones here to take a look at but those are the ones that I like to use um, and then that is all there is to it. You used to have to save this manually, but it, it does it all on its own now. So let's just take a look at this traffic graph here real quick. You can, at a glance with this, see your WAN traffic and your LAN traffic and check it out. So it's just a useful tool just to take a look at. So that's the basics of going through the wizard, getting your PFSense set up and running. And from this point in time, you're ready to go. It's, it's a working unit. Um, there are lots of other things you can do. Uh, firewall rules, set up VPNs, uh, one one NATs, uh, port forwarding, uh, intrusion detection, um, all kinds of things. And we're gonna go over many of those in the new in the next set of the videos so if you that but this is all we're going to do for this particular video so let's just switch back over here all right so this has been a, your pf since getting started from plugging in using the web wizard to get you up and running on pf since if you like this video go ahead and subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up hopefully you got something out of it and if you feel like supporting my channel directly, you can go to buy me a coffee and donate some money. Or if you look at the links below in this video, there are just, there are links, affiliate links to purchase EF Sense from Amazon. So feel free to help me out any one of those ways. If you, if you feel like you want to do that, I would highly appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Kevin Stevenson with Give Me the Geek.